And we could wait a longer time until it gets more developed, but if you start uh, discussing and debugging earlier, it may get better. Well, anyway, so you don't have to but you may come and criticize yourself as well. The original idea was that we will get. Uh, Figures and, and captions, but it was to some sort of last minute uh, initiative, so those are only figures without, without captions. But we can uh, go over and uh, develop some uh, ideas how do you like or do you like this uh, figures or and my suggestions for future uh, captions. Mm -hmm. And since it is only figures without paper, you can only guess what was worth from there.
Let me uh, go over the uh, short manuscript by Aaron and, and dis discuss it. So I have some comments, but maybe you, you have some something else to discuss it since there are not too many people. We are not limited by squeezing thoughts. Mm -hmm. So uh, there Second panels were great for the spectrum. There is another feature which is not labeled, and PK reviewer would ask what it is. Mm. So we, we may, uh, well, we, I mean, the first author who is responsible for everything may add additional label and generate um, the analysis. Like, we, uh, you, you already have works on uh, particle in the box interpretation, which could be too much for this paper. But some traces of your particle in the box analysis can penetrate into here. So you, you may use your experience from uh, this three-dimensional box analysis into here. And the transitions, uh, like in, in the, there is a particle in the box progression for both elements and holes. And uh, there are states we, which we can uh, name like S, P, and D, right? S is uh, when there are no harmonics, just one hole. Right, D yeah. when there is only one hole in either either of direction, and D when there are two holes in, in, in sum. And uh, each transition can be S to S, S to P, P to S, or S to D this way. And they are progressing in increase. So uh, it looks like the, the, the lowest one is S to S, to S and either uh, third or fourth it will be P to P, which are expected to be strong by selection rules. And uh, S to P or P to S are expected to have intermediate value of uh, energy, and by selection rules they are forbidden. Therefore, they are not so uh, intense. But uh, one can speculate that uh, because uh, symmetry is broken and not everything is ideal, uh, they have traces in density of states. And well, if one would do density of excited states, probably there would be a big peak here. But since they have uh, low oscillator strengths, they contribute if you, uh, not substantially to the uh, spectrum. I know for. In the hobby lab now, Sam figured out a way to get spectra, so there might be something to overlay on that. See if yes, any similar yes, ideas. and uh, if you have some experimental data, do not uh, hesitate to borrow it and just increase the list of quarters. Mm -hmm. um, people will not mind it, and uh, I will take negotiations on, on myself. Since you have access to data, just if you see something feeding, do it right away because time is precious. Um, for also for this figure, in figure T, you do have dynamics in panels C and D, but it is not clear uh, what is initial state, and probably because it is a letter paper, you try to present as a minimal information, but one can put here by an error. An arrow, where do you excite? Mm -hmm. Which will make it easier to connect with the other end. General Physical Chemistry now publishes uh, cover figures for free, but who knows if uh, some groups will discuss your paper in group meetings and print it on black and white. Uh, this uh, lines will be indistinguishable. So if it is not a big effort and you have a free minute, you may redraw it with some dots and dashes. Yeah, the new, like, I probably made a new plot script for it that has everything in there, so I just have to change the types. Mm -hmm.
probably redo a one ahead of the... Yeah, I, I don't mind, but you, you, you have seen uh, that it was controversial in the beginning, mm -hmm. that some people were um, objective. You may, well, again, it is your freedom of creativity, but you may um, build schematic diagram based on your understanding of particle in the box and combine particle in the box uh, diagram with schematic of uh, pathway of non organic relaxation. So I have several layers of meaning. But I, I don't care, it's your, your freedom. Well, it would be great to, to label. Uh, since your spectrum has or, or it has labels like A, B, C, D, you can tell like omega sub C here, if it was what, what was excited. Yeah, and I just put those in as like templates to see how it looks. Oh, <coughs> yes. With me. oh yes. But and sure you were planning to buy the Lexus. Um do you have plans for figures in those supporting information? The, yeah, these were the two that I have panels made for, but I have individual mm -hmm. figures as well. But can you remind what, what you use there? Um, fluctuations, okay. function on fluctuations. Oh, yes. uh, I think I was going to try to get MDPL, okay. so we have some more experimental. Uh -huh. Great. Yeah. Uh, computer right now? No, 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 no. Just, just tell what works. <coughs> you're, you're already presenting these things on, on group meetings and then your own presentation. I just remember what else I had. Do you have, uh, same as in the paper by Fatima that we are uh, going through, did you have dependence of the cooling rate on uh, excitation energy? I do have that in the spreadsheet somewhere. Okay, yeah. Nothing is mandatory, but it could be a reasonable complement. Mm -hmm. I know when I was looking at it, I think in the electron that had a constant cooling rate, mm -hmm. independent of where I excited it. So well, in, in certain range, probably if you excited it too high, you could. I think it maxed out the limit of how many orbitals we had. Okay. So it became unstable at some point. Okay. Uh, also, I know I'm, I'm uh, not. I'm too attached to movie, to the movie that changes. No, no, no. But uh, I mean, um, since movies uh, in supporting function is always brought up, one can make snapshots, like a couple of snapshots from the beginning and the middle, and put it as uh, figures for supporting information. And if one day we need uh, um, graphic table of contents, graphical abstract, and cover art, they would match their perfect. Mm -hmm. <coughs> would you like to verbalize any of your comments? I have a couple of questions. So the first one is why this work is special? Huh? Why this work is special? Do not ask me, ask. And you can, you can come here if you want to point on some figures. Um, make qualitative connections to experiment and how in terms of quantum yield and in cooling rates by using an additional method that hasn't been previously reported. So in part? this paper you will add lots of experimental yeah. data, right? Uh, yeah, so we'll reference that because we don't do any granted absorption stuff here. But I'll try, I think one of the things I would put in is like those um, energy relaxation figures comparing the cooling of what's restricted and that what's been restricted. Because I know in experiment they see that there's kind of a long-lived state just above the band gap. And that's what we see with the spin orbit calculations and not with the spin restricted. Mm -hmm. Okay. For the PL emission, so it seems the axis is not labeled correctly because you have emission below zero electron volts. What's the meaning of that? Uh, it's <laughs> not labeled correctly. That's okay. <laughs> good, I think. I just put it in there to like lay out how it would look. 
put in more time. And also for the density of states and also PDOS, why you just focus on very small regime? That's so the other feature doesn't matter? Yeah, because we're essentially working or modeling photophysics. So that band gap there is like spread of four UV, which is like within the limit of what you would do with spectroscopy on. Probably even a little bit larger. So those are like the most relevant states for cooling and for optical oh, for, spectra. For, for, for uh, anything observed with visible spectroscopy. Yeah, visible spectroscopy. And then if you expand it out, it's just other things aren't very resolvable. Like the like those sub gap states near the band edges, they're harder to see. Because the further you go up, the bigger your density states get. So it's or the higher the peaks become. question of you would inspire me to ask. <coughs> I think that if I would be a reviewer, um, what is the reference? What is to compare with? Like, uh, ty typically, if you present some results, you would compare either different methods or different models. And here it looks like one successful method for one successful model. Mm -hmm. So it is uh, successful in respect to what? Uh, I, you, do, you don't need to, to answer right now, but uh, it, it should be in the paper or maybe in, in the figures or in supporting information as well. So maybe it is uh, successful in, in respect to model without ligands. Or maybe it is successful in respect to uh, model with defects. Or maybe it is only regarding methods, maybe it is successful in respect to model without spin orbit, like this without, visa without spin orbit, it is less intense uh, photoluminescence for this transition. Mm -hmm. the, well, the, the work will be interesting and digested by community anyway, but for better, better di digesting, it, it needs to be logical uh, trend, like it's not a set of data, but it is some story. So we, 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 you don't need, but if you have some ideas, what, what you are comparing, you can work the rest out. Well, it's the one thing I was planning on. I think I mentioned earlier, it was just the cooling rates, comparing spin orbit and non-spin orbit. <coughs> and I guess we can, in principle, do yields too, because I can't remember if I did yields. You may have shown it in your oral presentation. <coughs> well, I mean, comparing quantum yields to spin restricted and spin mm -hmm. arc. Mm -hmm. I know I did the spinner, but I can't. I don't know if I ever actually did it with a spin restricted. I'll have to check. It, it just the, the, the way of logical construction of the paper is easy, even if your results are absolutely perfect. If, if there is, like, it is good compared to what? Mm -hmm. So you, one can intentionally prepare something bad and then compare it to this is better than something else. Yeah, every reference mm -hmm. point. How you compare the electronic structure of models, weights, and result against? Uh, I have not. Well, I guess. In some sense, I have. Like, I've removed some ligands and then let it re-optimize and do calculations. How but not remote? completely bare. Right. I guess I haven't because... I guess I didn't see a use for it yet. I guess that would be a reference. So I think it's a... In Svetlana's paper on ligand cooling rates, I think that's how they got their reference. Do you, uh, you probably, <coughs> in figure one, you have your cubic structure without ligands. 
Mm -hmm. That was just done in VMP. Yes, but you do have uh, electronic structure for this ligand device. I can do that. It would take much shorter, much shorter effort than, than the rest of the completed calculations. Yeah. And even if you do not include it into the paper, there is a very high chance that a uh, reviewer will you do not see me and request it anyway. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there is no question that without ligands, it will be very uh, like vanishing photoluminescence. It will be like three orders of magnitude or even more. And then uh, <coughs> it is kind of made up, but then you say, see what wonderful job ligands are doing. <laughs> No, yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, you can put that in the queue on yours. Mm -hmm. okay. Did you walk through, do you have any comments to... <coughs> yeah. Can, can you ver verbalize? Hmm. Uh, so these atoms, I don't know, that there are different kind of colors of atoms. I think... Uh, the color should be mentioned. I don't know whether it's reasonable or not. And for DOS, I believe this one is partial uh, DOS. So uh, Y axis values are not visible. Uh, and uh, for this figure, for electron dynamics figure, X axis values and Y axis values. And what are the initial states? Number of initial states are not here. Uh -huh. So the last ones, I just didn't do them yet because I was going to redo the figures. Okay. So those are just there to satisfy like how they would look if they were done. And then I missed the last part of your second for the PDOS or part mm -hmm. of the states. Mm -hmm. Y values and Y axis values. Since this one is absorbance, right? This is absorbance. Just can't be skip. I think they have this. They should have the same scale. You're talking about figures B and D? Uh, C and D. C and yeah, B and D, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. They are the same scale. Mm -hmm. Same is. So the well, same. D is the same Y scale as C? Not the same Y scale. Mm -hmm. It's zoomed in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Why will it be visible? I guess I zoomed in because, <coughs> well, if you go higher, the only thing you see is, like, the black line is the total density states. So there's more density states from other orbitals, but the main ones to focus on are the ones that contribute the most towards dynamics are just the ones in that negative 2 to 2 range. For me. And I just cut out the black line because it's not really providing much. And it gives better resolution for the other features. And the, for your first question, I tried to put the color labels into the titles of each of them. So you can see for the CSPBBR title, like the CS is blue, to correspond to like the little blue dots. Oh, okay, it might be that they're just too small, so the colors don't pop up. Mm -hmm. That's how I tried to label them anyway. But you can you know, duplicate this information in the caption. Mm -hmm. right. <coughs> Cyan, gold, and pink stay for cesium, wet, and brown. Mm -hmm. Better? Then submit it to the
Some inspiration since last time, and have some idea for you.
So we have luxury of plenty of time. If you don't mind, we can discuss. Well, uh, with the periodicity of these uh, structures, um, we, I have minimal doubts or no doubts that the structures are, are correct, but uh, there is a challenge how to represent them and, and to avoid confuses in the universe. So uh, if we switch on our imagination and try to project the periodicity, it looks like this row of atoms is identical to this row of atoms. It looks like uh, which, which uh, software do you use for visualization? Vesta. So it, it may uh, do tricks on us. It may add atoms uh, which do not belong to unit cell just to make it for better visibility, to show where, the, where are the borders of unit cell. So I would either remove these two or remove these two rows of, of atoms. Or try to re maybe not for the final figure, but himself, try to record it with different software and see which atoms belong to unit cell. So um, another option would be to um, plot three unit cells, the central, plus one and minus one, and then do this plus one and, my, one and minus one in uh, transparent. And then, then it, it will be clearly seen how this uh, periodic structure is, is developed. So s same here, the unit cell uh, seems to include three layers, and if one goes, uh, so this is diamond structure with tetrahedral, so this bond goes up, so it, it looks like these two atoms are these two atoms. So um, the software makes tricks on us and, and frivolously add atoms just for some reasons to, to make it uh, for better visibility on the point of view of developers of software which is not right. So would be, again, either to keep only three layers here and three layers here, or maybe add this transparent, transparent things. Would it be possible to just pull and expand this uh, figure that it takes more space? Then the aspect ratio will be changed. Huh? Then the aspect ratio will be changed. Yeah, but. Uh, the readers are literate and they would uh, follow not the visual impression of aspect ratio but what are the labels or just replot it in the, in the panel because right now it is very clogged and if you want to focus attention on it well it is your, your decision but it, it, it could be more for better visual uh, the like, another option is I think I can huh? I think uh, I can draw only the conduction band then. Hmm? So I can I can draw the conduction band only. Separately. Yes, con conduction band only and uh, use it in uh, portrait okay. alignment and use all the space. And also, why the arrows are pointing to different directions? Like for the left panels, the arrows are pointed upwards, but for the right panel, it is pointing downwards. Because the first uh, or left figure is radiative transition. Electron is supposed to travel from balance band to conduction band. And the right one, it's non-adiabatic transition. So electron is supposed to come from excited state to the bandage. So for the left panel, you mean radiative transition is just absorption? Uh, yeah, it, electron will absorb for photon and will go to the excited state and conduction band. Right. Okay. Maybe different color. Maybe, maybe if it is so so important. Uh, well, you, you, you may take time and explain it in details in in the captions. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I was playing pick and, and developing more s things of secondary importance. Later on, you are making argument that there is a sub gap here and sub gap there, right? Mm, so there is density of states. Yes, in density mm -hmm. of states. There is a because of this offset of the in the valence band for one on one and offset in the uh, uh, in the room, room plus one and one zero zero there is a sub there are sub gaps which affect rates. But what is I don't know the answer, but maybe you have ideas or found it in the literature. What is the nature of this splitting? Why they split here uh, substantially? And also, in analyzing this uh, question, one may want uh, to print orbitals. I don't know if you were doing it. I have. Yeah, I followed all. <laughs> For some Put it here. Some <laughs> I, I never saw them, but it will be. Uh, I, I will have a lot of curiosity. Maybe everyone in the, in the audience. Uh, up to now, we all were plotting orbitals which have index a, l, l, k at the end for all k points. Or uh, if there is more than one, they are added together. But for for here, one should explore VASP keywords to remove this option and make orbital specifically for first key point, for second key point, for third key point, and they should look differently. So, yeah. so it was included in the, the molecular physics manuscript. Huh? Uh, the orbitals were included in molecular physics manuscript. Were, were made this way? Yeah. Right? OK. Mm -hmm. but in supporting documents. So you, you may, I well, I don't know if it is necessary, but if, if I would do this work myself in a systematic way, I would make like uh, one, two, three, four, like si 16 orbitals for valence band, 16 orbitals for conduction band, and just staring on them and then how they seem or they different. Right now, I have only um, uh, for homo and low. Okay, but tr try to. It, okay. it may bring uh, some scientific insights. I don't know which, but... Have you seen uh, how Aaron was labeling uh, his uh, spectra? Peaks in the spectra, like A, B, C. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right now, I don't have a clear idea, but maybe through discussions and while writing, you can, or through orbitals, you can identify what is the physical nature of each peak. And m maybe we can just label them and then refer to them. Even if there are more than one uh, uh, states under the peak, they may have some similarities in their in their nature. So it, even if we do not come with clear idea, we can just label like A, B, C, or A prime, B prime for for peaks. Um, the ranges. We do not need this UV. So uh, after 250, we do not care. We don't do UV things. And here it should be expanded to 700. Because your lowest band gap is uh, here uh, 1.8, right? And if you uh, convert 1.8 uh, electron volts gap into the uh, wave numbers, it will be 690. So th there should be additional peak which corresponds to the uh, lowest transition which would be a reason to have here. And also same, same as uh, when we were discussing figures, <coughs> uh, you may add, since 
on the next figures you show example of dynamics. You can show by arrow where do you excite, what is your excitation for for the thing that you are uh, analyzing. It'll be easier to label your highest absorption peaks too. You cut yeah. it off a little higher. Yep. Make 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 a note because it, it's so easy, uh, easy to forget things. And also here, the position of a subgap is suspicious. Position of subgap or uh, arrow to subgap? Yes. I, I would put arrow subgap is between right. peaks. I would put it like in, in here and in, in there. Right. Uh, there is a thing that... Um, Fatima is author of a very important practical step that is, is, seems evident and clear, but since it is a very new area and no one else did it, it would be better to explain in very basic steps how you label your states. So give equation and give uh, maybe even example in a schematic diagram. So uh, what you are doing, you are merging together two indices. One index for orbitals, which could, could be like lumen plus zero, lumen plus zero, lumen plus zero, and the index of k point, which is like k point one, k point two, k point uh, three, into one super super index, like state one, state two, state three. So you, you may want to make diagram like this and explain it. And give uh, equation, which you used to label them, and add a diagram. It, it, it's very simple. But since it is very new, no one else did it, it's better to uh, highlight your uh, breakthrough, your, your methodology. Because it could be useful for any person who would start to um, follow you in, in, the, in this uh, research. And on the, on the first glance, without preparation, it's hard to follow to the next figures without this explanation. So it's... Uh, it, it may look childish, too simple, but it, it, it will really help to, to go further. I had a comment on that too later, wouldn't it? Or could it be possible just to merge your LUMO and K value and just put the K value as a super index or superscript, like in front of the L to try to condense it? Yeah, yeah. Like LUMO. With superscript zero, one of is superscript uh, like point thirteen, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, could be. But uh, since it was not offered anywhere else, one may do some really simplified, childish way in the first paper where it is presented, and then condense and make it more concise in the in, in, in next next works. Because if one squeeze too much information uh, in, uh, on the first place, people may not digest it. But yeah, I, I like this idea. It's not very visible if, if I would do different background color, could be a little better, or may, maybe make yellow average I line. I was thinking, all right, I like a, a comment that said white, 
we can do yellow or something bright. Yeah. I do have a question. So normally the expectation value dotted curve it seems to be a little below what the population is. Are usually they're kind of centered on top of each other? Well, uh, here it is super like superposition of 50 here, 50 there. If, uh, then it will be in the in the in the middle. It's always a problem with averaging. Uh, if you were frequently listening to, I'm, I'm going to say something irrelevant to this figure. But if you were frequently listening to talks by old president, he explains why he hates uh, iron fast and likes uh, surface hopping. Uh, he gives an argument like uh, if you are a pedestrian and you have a pool from from uh, from the rain in front of you you have a superposition of your potential trajectories to avoid by going through the left side or through the right side but if you make an average you go st strictly into the pool and uh, surface hopping in some sense avoids it so it takes either one or another trajectory mm -hmm. <coughs> well, I guess not in the middle of the figure. I mean, so at time negative three, if you follow that all the way up. Um, I know sometimes if you get too far away, or if your index is too high, it becomes kind of unstable. Okay. The energy calculation does. Well, maybe 10 to minus 3 is already too long time, and already some mixing does happen. So if you would. Mm, Progress it to minus four, or minus five, maybe it will go away. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, if you play PK, then the crossover from one regime to another regime, the, the point where, where it, it happens, could be related to features in the density of states. I don't know which. Is it subgaps or, or this uh, features which we may label like A, A B, C? But uh, this is open thing to discuss, and uh, maybe while we're writing, you come up with some bright ideas. What's the meaning of all transitions here? Huh? What's the meaning of all transitions? This diagram. I, I'll, I'll give word to the author. I, I think okay. I understand, but. Uh, she's a prime expert in, in these uh, things. So what, what are all transitions? So yeah, I think uh, the bear structure would be a good figure to explain this. Yeah. Huh? Should I bring up the band structure? Mm -hmm. Here. So on the right uh, uh, figure, uh, we can see electron can transfer from one k point to the same k point. To red arrows, there is direct transitions, and all transitions it one k points to another k point plus one k point to the same k point. Uh, so it's so a combination of direct, direct and indirect both. Yes. So transitions. Direct plus combination of direct and indirect is what she and, uh, was as old. Yaron suggested last time momentum restricted and momentum <laughs> unrestricted, but it is uh, it is hard to write in the graph. It's a mom restricted. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, no, no uh, you can use this uh, words like momentum restricted yes, and restricted in the uh, discussion section to to bring like we don't need to make secret and big and trick tell like it is a. No one else did it before, and we do not know how to refer to these things. And uh, there is a possible exp um, nomenclature to call them momentum restricted, momentum unrestricted. Maybe, who knows what readers would like. You always do abbreviations too. If okay. you put too many of those, okay. people get lost. Yeah. Ah, that's a good idea. So it's, yeah. it's hard to label everything correctly. <laughs> it should be UK. Unrestricted momentum. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I guess there is something wrong with the blue figure. Here? No, the blue figure. So 
So if we look at the energy of the LUMO, uh -huh. it is not consistent with the density of states shown previously. So right now it's like, just like the first one, it's like one point something, 1.2, 1 right? Oh, so the, um, it could be the procedure by subtracting between uh, energy of orbital and energy of Fermi can be done separately and uh, with different constants. Like one could, could. And it seems there is a huge difference. Then probably one time it was the energy of Fermi was not subtracted at all. I can easily imagine it. What, what's the value of uh, difference that you have observed? Yes, it's like 0.6 electron volts. 0.6 in the density of states and about 1.3 in here, right? Yes. Yeah, this should be taken care of. There, there, there are two re uh, possible reasons. One reason is uh, it is just processing, processing things that can be fixed very quickly. And, and another one uh, that uh, during ground state calculations and uh, during the molecular dynamics, uh, value of Fermi energy may shift consistently. So all, all orbitals may shift. So there is nothing to panic about, but it's better to analyze it and find what is going on. Thank you for your eye. For the rates figure? Yes. The y-axis should probably be renamed. Because the way it looks, it looks like it's an inverse picoseconds as a unit. We shouldn't have any units. Uh, yeah, now also, it's, it's a read of <laughs> time. Just, just a second. I would just move this bracket from here to there. Yeah. I guess I'll do that. So, so time divided by picosecond and then taken logarithm. Yeah. Maybe yeah. also put relaxation time in the subscript for tau. OK. Or it might just make it. So, like that's just a little cumbersome to read. Like okay. you can, please, please uh, make note because it, it can be forgotten through, through the discussion. Even so, for uh, it's okay. So, so here is is time instead of rate. Yes, it is time. Uh, why we selected time? Uh, the, the, there are available data for both rate and time. And for uh, fitting to have linear, uh, to have the gap long, long uh, larger uh, energy offset gives longer relaxation. So in, in, in sense of uh, energy gap law, the linear trend is better observed in the time or logarithm time versus energy offset. Mm -hmm. So the Strict energy gap law is really just look like a, a straight line in this axis. So it, there, it's not, it doesn't deal with any science, it's just better way of fitting in this system of coordinates. So it is not ready, it is time. I guess I also have a question about the, uh, the white, like vertical dashed lines. Vertical? On the blue figures. Uh, oh, <laughs> but this white stuff? Yeah. I guess, like, is what is that supposed to represent? Because it seems to me like that's supposed to be tied to the KE, but the KE should be a rate and not a time, and that makes me think it's a time. The the dashed line does. I, I would just put k sub e to minus one, or or replace k to tau. Yeah. Fine. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks for good I and please please mark it explicitly. Because all of these little details can be easily forgotten. So what's the meaning of this white line? White dash line? Um, can I try to answer? Um, the, there is a procedure how the black dashes are converted into rate of relaxation. Mm -hmm. And it is, uh, it is already denoted in the methods. It will be denoted in the methods section, and it is clear. But some of the readers will not read the methods section. They will go all the way through the figures. I confess that I read many papers. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
And for such uh, careless readers, it is a way, uh, like visual way, how to correlate uh, um, black line with either rate or uh, time of relaxation that is reported in subsequent figure. So it is not rigorously, it is not necessary, but it is auxiliary tool to visualize things for careless readers. But am I, am I representing it right? Okay. So I guess I still don't understand exactly what it's representing then. Is that like the is, I mean, is that supposed to be the lifetime of it, or is that like, supposed uh, to? Uh, lifetime or relaxation time, how quick excitation goes from here to there? If you assume it's a single exponential. So like once it gets down to 33% yeah, of the value, yeah, that's, that's what it's supposed to represent. So why is it in the excited state on one, and then the, the lumo on the other? This question is not to me. Now it is time for first author to answer. What was the question? Um, so like the one dash line is on LUMO plus 22, and then the other one is down on LUMO, I guess? Because mm -hmm. if that's supposed to be a, uh, like a relaxation time, that just seems very strange. Like, uh, why on the rightmost it is closer to Luma, and on the leftmost it is closer to Luma plus something. Why it is not right in the middle? Um, is it is it an um, artistic representation, or you literally took the uh, relaxation time and put this vertical line based on the numerical data? I just thought. <laughs> oh, so it is artistic okay. representation. Okay. Okay, then uh, if it is artistic, then try to make it in the middle if, if you think it is still needed. Otherwise, picky readers will protest. <laughs> so when you were doing only four key points, Luma and Luma plus one did have bigger offset, mm -hmm. and Luma plus one and Luma plus two had smaller offset. When you do this, uh, whatever, 16 key points, the uh, relative offsets between Luma and Luma plus one and Luma plus one and Luma plus two change. Um, one may want to develop an explanation, because we need to justify that uh, Calculations with four key points were sufficient, but if there were qualitative changes uh, upon increase of the number of key points, uh, we, we may expect that it will change also the conclusions. And uh, there, there is no time to redo calculations, but we, we uh, need to assess how much this error will be. Will it be something drastic and qualitative, or just minor? quantitative corrections. But if, if, you, if you already found it, then we shouldn't, we shouldn't hide whatever is uh, was, uh, found. Just analyze it and in the next paper, it can be taken care of by computing rates with more data points really uh, everything. Uh, I guess I have a related question. So can I go back to the table one? at the bottom of the previous page, right here. So the same key point, point 0.16 and point 0.33, the data are pretty similar for both cases. Mm -hmm. So is there physical meaning? Why they're similar? I don't know. <laughs> I went first also to analyze and explain. Is this just a typo? The difference is just constant. That's all I know. <laughs> the difference well, between uh, direct and all transitions, it's a constant for these two k points. Uh, 
difference. Oh, so you're surprised that this, uh, <laughs> so uh, these two numbers are so close, and here these two numbers are so close. Mm. So, what are these numbers? These are the. This, those are. So, generally, I'm, I'm not sure if, if this figure is uh, sufficient. Maybe we we'll need to give more more explanations, or at least maybe even highlight this by like yellow cloud and this by pink cloud to show that those are, those are two different sets of data. And the number that Fatima is presenting in the, in the table are the average offset between this set of data and this set of data. So it is a sub summary of their indirect transitions, or how Aaron called them, unrestricted transitions. So it's a basically the main result of the paper, how strong the role of you know, indirect transitions is. <coughs> and uh, if we look on this figure, it looks like the offset for whatever uh, k point would, would be is uh, approximately the same. So the, this both. Uh, data sets are offset by several orders of, of magnitude. The, there is a question that we, we didn't resolve and we may mention in the uh, discussion section that uh, Javid was raising. Like, uh, how this would change if we make an effort to normalize everything? I don't know if you have if you have steam I, to, to I, I did. So what I did I um I um I multiply that below by the difference between these two coupons and divided by the total number of coupons. Mm -hmm. Wait, and yes. it still shows this orders of magnitude difference. Uh it's on the table. That, that order, but for in the table, yeah, for for, for three k points and not for zero, because I don't know. Okay, but is is it reflected in the in the in this figure? Did you uh, have you made an effort to redo this figure after normalization, effort? or not yet? Mm -hmm. Well, I huh? well, I, I, I don't care right now, but while preparing the, the whole paper, just look back on it. And can... If, if so normalize it, means uh, I need to do this for like all the values, then... Uh, maybe we should... Dedicate a meeting on the, on the normalization. It's not. It's not an easy thing. It it could be something like if there are four k points, four squared is uh, sixteen. So divide on all results for indirect on sixteen, and all results for direct. Just keep them as is, and then it will can uh, remove one order of magnitude. But I'm I'm not sure. One needs to talk with very sober eye. Uh, ten, ten. Okay. And do not, we shouldn't delay developing of the uh, written manuscript. We will, we will add it through the iterations. I still have a question about this figure. Yes, please. So it looks like for all K points, all transitions are very similar. Like the the bottom part of the figure, right? Wait, wait. Uh, please navigate me where to look at. The Just a part. solid. Down. Down one. Yeah. yeah, down here. So for at different different key points, they are all similar, right? Similar trend. Okay. But for direct transitions, it is not the case, right? So 
So for the lower, the slow transitions are direct, and uh, quick transitions are direct plus indirect. Am I right? It's just opposite. Opposite, okay. Oh, okay, shorter, shorter time, direct. Hmm. Yes, I think the momentum is just the initial condition, right? That's why I see we start out at a certain momentum and then let it propagate through all transitions. So you think, like, once you go a little bit further in time, they would find the similar paths. So the rates might be similar. Maybe. Please record your idea. And uh, you know, I, I do have a hypothetical answer to your question. Uh -huh. When we are doing all transitions, direct and indirect, number of channels of relaxation is drastically larger. We, we scan through multiple offsets, and the number of uh, it's like superposition of several channels uh, that like screen through anything possible. And with such number of channels, uh, th there is less dependence on uh, individual subgaps. So maybe there is a subgap in the original key point where we start from, but there is no subgap in the nearby key point. So, in some sense, the direct plus indirect transitions is a way to avoid subgaps. Would it make sense? Makes sense. Okay. And then, if it is correct and we do not get argument against this idea, one can put it in conclusions. Like, including indirect transitions is a way to avoid subcaps for relaxation and to make the uh, relaxation quicker. <laughs> Next question. So, this time just the direct transitions. So, why? Panel C are so different from panel D. Like in panel D, each key point has its own feature, right? Own trend, I mean. But in panel C, it seems there is a lot of similarity between different key points. Is there any physical meaning? What was the question, please? Why they are different? So um, in uh, in the one zero zero at larger energies, the trend goes down against the uh, gap law for each key point. For one one one, three of key points go against gap law, and one goes along. Let's try to make connection through the end structure. I do not have exact answer, but there are qualitative differences if you look on the conduction bands here and there. So for 100, they are kind of equally spaced for each key point, and just this spacing becomes smaller and smaller as we go to a higher value of momentum. And here, for the first three, 
there is a sub gap that would affect uh, transition after going above certain energy. Mm -hmm. It just works the crossover from one uh, range to another one. And uh, for the last key point, they are equally spaced and uh, it seems that it should be same trend as we, as we get higher and higher energy. Mm -hmm. I know what, what I'm telling is not clear, I don't have a clear mind, but definitely one can compare density of states and, and these rates and make connections. The, the density of states, uh, uh, not density of states, dispersion diagrams for these two directions of growth have qualitatively different features and uh, these features definitely would affect the rates of relaxation, the pattern of sub-gaps and, 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 and rates. And uh, this paper doesn't have results uh, for calls. For, for, for holes, this effect should be even stronger, which can be probably left to the next paper to continue. Any more uh, questions to the first author? Okay, then probably let's um, submit if you want feedback comments back to the first author. And also, What should we do next? Uh, next time we meet. When we is meet the next time we're meeting? Friday or Tuesday? Uh, for Friday, it will be different scheduling and uh, different uh, announcements. For Tuesday, Tuesday is like um, numbers, but uh, not everyone. Only for Paper is ready. When will you have your figures and captions next Tuesday? I could at least have like a good chunk of them. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's, let's I mean, do just. That, I still don't know exactly like what I'm going to be including. I still need to actually dive into the uh, the models that I didn't look at in as much depth as I did on the poster and see kind of what's going on with those. Don't go too much uh, away from poster. Just basically make a pa paper as a representation of your poster. Because if, if you try to diverge too far, you can uh, postpone completion to next uh, century. Okay. Just, so let, I let, should let, not worry about any of the other models, just the hydroxyl and the do acetate? Not worry. Do not worry. Okay. Um, you can do 10 other papers on other models. <laughs> let's, let's complete whatever is ready in a, in a quick mode. Okay. Yeah, if that's the case, then yes, I can yes, yes, definitely yes. have, like, yeah. And probably Aaron and Fatima can add uh, the captions so that we don't rush too much. And then in two weeks, uh, probably each of writers can uh, compose the results section, right? It shouldn't be a big deal just... And uh, this, uh, it's it's an uh, extension of the uh, figure captions. Mm -hmm. No objections? No, that sounds good plan for that. Okay, yeah. I think 
we are, we are in, uh, in less Russian, more detailed focus on what we do compared to when you sit here with a bigger crowd. Okay, and uh, Fridays will be more like show for uh, coming to the front and delivering some fun stuff. Are the meetings still going to be at 3 o'clock on Fridays? You, you want other time? Uh, well, I work at the Math Emporium from 3 to 5, so... Well, many people voted for 3. <laughs> but um, when there is a bigger crowd, it gets up to 6. Yeah. <laughs> so it's still uh, be able to, to, to come. And uh, writing is more important than speaking. <laughs> Well, you, you, you will schedule a couple of time chunks closer to the end for you, for you or for like other models, and maybe for some of the equations that for like collaborating with Solis Alexander. Do not rush and do not expect um, many results in this immediately. We, we will need to go over <laughs> equations again and again and, and discuss. So it's a, a high risk, long run project. Yeah. M much more challenging than uh, computational stuff that we are doing. Use this quick turnaround. Um, just uh, so that it doesn't look like we are speaking a uh, foreign language. Um, originally, London is from a uh, th theoretical group in, in physics that. Uh, deals very successful computation of uh, hydrodynamics like liquid flow and there are very advanced methods to solve how liquids go through pipes or how they mix and make turbulence and in some sense charge density that goes across interfaces also some some sort of uh, field that can be processed by the same methods mm -hmm. and uh, the idea it's very crazy, high-risk idea to merge <laughs> together these two approaches and develop hydrodynamic type of equations for charge density on the interface of uh, photovoltaic cells, which may or may not work, but if it will work, it will be something attractive to many readers. Okay, well, many thanks for investing your time and for coming in either without any notice or on a very short notice. <laughs> and, uh, th there will be an announcement, but it, it will not affect any of you. Most likely, the presenter on coming Friday will be jumped. The second Friday will be Braden, who already told it. He wants to speak, but not uh, Not immediately. Okay. Uh, that's the cover. Meeting is dismissed. <laughs>